Hi guys, it's Susan. Today is day 11 of Marion's 31 day challenge and today we are going to be making some coffee filter flowers. Um, I showed these on this project a few days ago and I've had several requests to do these so this is what we're going to do. Let me zoom in here. Okay. These are really simple to make you guys. When you see how easy they are you'll be you'll be just like, is that all there is to making those? They're easy. You can see on these I have put pearls in the centers. Down here on this one I didn't put a center in it. But you can see that these really stand up off of your project very nicely. They add a lot of nice dimension. So let's get started. And the first thing you're going to need to do these are just some regular flat cone shaped filters. And they make these in the white and a natural color. I just use the white ones. I've got some natural ones that I have used, but for today we're just going to use this one. And these are steam sealed at the bottom and up one side. And the first thing you're going to do is just take your scissor and cut off that where it's sealed across the end or across the side. I don't even bother cutting this part off. I'm not going to use that part. It doesn't matter to me. And then what I do with mine is I, I fold them in half like this. And for me, it just makes it a little easier to do. And then I take my decorative edge scissors, and this one just happens to be wavy. Sometimes I use the wavy. Sometimes I use the zigzag. Sometimes I use the scallop. Any decorative edge will work. And if you don't have a pair of decorative edge scissors, you can take your regular scissors and just cut the edge wavy. So I'm just going to cut this off. And I'm just trimming off the very top just to get that edge on there is all I'm really doing. And I've also found that by folding these in half, they cut a little easier with your decorative edge scissors. So now I'm going to take my plain scissors. And I'm going to go down roughly three quarters of an inch. And it will depend on how large you want your flowers. If you want smaller flowers, you don't have to cut down that far. But I'm going down to about three quarters of an inch. And I'm just going to cut it following the curve of the coffee filter. And that one's actually a little thinner than it should be. And then you can see when you unfold this, on it. You have a long strip like this. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my decorative edge scissors and I'm going to cut that straight edge off again. And that's all I'm doing is just cutting that edge off. And you can see this paper can get a little tough to cut. It's really, it's really thick and it's very fibrous so sometimes it's hard to cut. Come down here, cut a curve, and then do it one more time so that you end up with three pieces. Okay. And cut this one. And what you will end up with then when you're finished are three pieces each one a little shorter than the one before. See? Can you see those? Hang on. There you go. So you can see that the first one you cut because it was from the top of the filter is obviously the longest. Alright? So then what I do with these, hang on here. I wanna, and I've got some I've pre-cut here. And I'm just going to color this one just to show in fact, I'm going to color a short one just to show you. Whoops. Hang on. Dog's throwing a fit over something. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. That was somebody at the front door. Okay. So, I'll show you how I color this. Simi, go lay down. So, there's a little short one we have cut. I'm going to get one of my ratty towels. I'm just going to lay this on here. And you can color these with about anything, but I have found that it's helpful to... <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Simmy, you're okay. Go lay down. I know. I know. Someone was at your door, but it's okay. It's okay. And what I've got here is the same color wash that we used on the fabric flower the other day. And the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my filter laying here. And i got to get make sure all my paint shook up. And I'm just going to spray this on. And I'm going to saturate this really well, you guys. You don't want to scrimp. And then I have my walnut ink in walnut. And this is an antiquing solution. And I'm going to spray some of that on there. And now I'm going to dry this with my heat gun. I'll probably fast forward through this because it's loud. Okay. Okay, guys, and then next, because I like I like the variation in color on my flowers, so now I'm going to take my Distress Ink, and this one just happens to be Fired Brick, and I'm going to rub this over it, and you have to rub this kind of carefully so that you don't tear your flower, because these coffee filters will rip apart fairly easily. Okay. Just checking to make sure I'm on frame correctly. Okay, now I'm going to bring my little crappy towel back. And I'm going to spray this with my Glimmer Mist in Pink Taffy. Let me get the Glimmer all shook up off the bottom. And I'm going to dry it again. Okay, guys, there you go. Now, normally when I do these, I will get out, you know, several coffee filters and do all my cutting and then all of my coloring and then put my flowers together, kind of mass production style. So I have several of these done, ready to put centers on and be put on projects. So we're going to set this one aside because I've already done this. And the next step, you're going to need some some thread and I actually use quilting thread because you need something fairly heavy a good heavy cotton is the best and this one is not cotton this is a nylon and this one you have to be kind of careful of if you well you'll see in later steps because nylon of course is a plastic product and therefore it will melt when heated with a heat gun you'll find out why that's important in a little bit and I also color my flowers before I put them together because you could do the white flowers and put them all together in white but then when you start spraying them you're gonna have a problem getting your color all the way to the center of your flower and as you can see on these the sides of these flowers do show which is why I flipped my filter over and colored both sides okay because the underside of this is going to show a little bit so you want color all over your flower clear to the center and on the underside so now I've got my thread and I've doubled it on my needle and you're just going to stitch around this bottom edge and you don't have to do this perfectly guys it doesn't have to be anything close to perfect mine are never perfect but you just stitch along And this is the part of the flowers that I don't particularly like doing the best. And I have seen people do this on the sewing machine. I have tried using my sewing machine and I have found that it is much harder. For one, you only get a single thread to gather on. and. What I want to point out here is I want you to look at the size of the stitches I'm doing. And I'm actually going to zoom in on this. You might, but I want to make sure you understand something about this that I found out the hard way. Okay, you see the size of my stitches? They're about a, 
uh, oh, I don't know, just shy of a quarter of an inch so that they're not teeny tiny little stitches. And the reason that that is important, it's important to use a little larger stitch is because if you use the little tiny stitches, that's this is paper, it's not fabric. And the little teeny tiny stitches are just going to cause a perforation. You're, I mean, you're just going to make a perforated line around the edge of your coffee filter. And when you go to gather it, it's just going to tear. You're going to tear off that bottom edge instead of being able to gather it. And you can also see that I'm, oh, I don't know, probably not quite a quarter of an inch up from the bottom edge. All right, you can see I clipped that to get my needle loose. You don't want to try to do this with a needle attached. And then what I do is I take and grab a hold of all four strings like this and start, let me get a little better grip on that. And I start on each side and work each side to the center rather than grabbing this side and trying to push it all to the other side. I found that your coffee filters last longer and don't have such a tendency to tear if you work from the ends towards the center. Okay. And I just keep bunching it up. And this string can be a little hard to hang on to, especially this time of year when I don't know about people in other parts of the world, but here in Iowa, it's very dry in the winter. And our hands just dry out terrible. My hands look awful. And I put lotion on probably four or five times a day, and I'm still dry. It's just nature of the beast here. Okay, and I want to get that gathered as much as I can without without tearing the paper. I'm going to kind of try to lay this down. And yeah, the dog's still pacing around growling. Because <laughs> someone dared come to her front door. She tends to be very protective of me all the time. But um, especially when Kevin is gone, she can really, she can really throw a fit. Okay, and I've pulled the strings to the back side of the flower and I'm just going to tie it off and I'm going to tie it a couple of times. There we go and I've forgotten to plug in my heat gun, my glue gun. So let's get my little crappy glue gun out and get it plugged in. It heats up fast. We'll be fine. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to get my thread out of the way and I'm going to clip these off. Not too close, but you know, fairly close so that they don't peek out the edges. And then these little ends, like see this little end sticking up, I'm just going to fold that down. Just like that. I'm going to fold the other one down. Okay, now you do the same thing to all three. And just so that you guys didn't have to sit there and watch me sew for that whole time. I have already got the other two circles sewn. This is the largest strip that we started with. This is the middle and then of course this one is the, in, the shortest. And then you're going to need a circle of some sort and you can see by looking at my circle that I just rough cut it. It's not going to show so it really doesn't matter what your circle looks like. And what we're going to do as soon as my glue gun heats up here is we're going to stack these. We're going to take this one. It's going to go on here first. And then we're going to put on this one, and then we're going to put on this one. Okay, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our disc, and we are going to get a pretty good amount of glue on it, okay? You don't want to scrimp here. And my glue gun's just barely hot enough to work. So you can see I've got a good amount of glue. We're going to take our largest one. And we're going to lay it on here, and I'm going to make 
make it a circle because it's not quite perfect because things just aren't quite perfect most of the time. And I'm going to hold that on there and get that stuck down really well. And you can see there's still a hole in the center and that's what you want to get these to fluff up and have the, the dimension like I li like like I like them. You want that hole. Because what you're going to do with this one then is you're going to kind of wad it up like this. You're going to stick the end of that and push that into that hole. And it's not going to go in completely. So I'm going to put glue in that little hole that was left by this one and I'm putting a little around the hole. And I'm going to put this in like this. And I'm going to hold it there for a minute and so that that glue will then help hold your flower up so that it's naturally fluffier. Did that make sense or was that like stupid? And I want that glue to set up a little bit before I just let it go, do its own thing. Okay, and you can see already that that flower is standing up. So now we're going to take the third one and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the glue right in the middle of this one and then I'm really going to apply some pressure and get those stuck down in there. So there's my glue and I'm going to take this one, I'm going to kind of wad it up again and stick it right into that glue. I'm going to actually take my tweezers because I don't like to get burned, and I do more often than not. And I'm really pushing that down in there. See how I'm just, I'm, I'm not doing it any favors. And you'll get glue all over your tweezers. It comes right off. And I'm not getting that stuck where I want it. I really want that in there so that it makes my flower stand up. Okay, and that's that's it as far as assembling your flowers. Now I'll fluff it and move it around and make it look pretty, you know, just like we all do. And I think for this one we're going to put a pearl in the center. So let me get my pearls down, get down my bead stash. And I need my smaller tweezer. And what color do I want to put in this? I kind of like these. How's that one look? That one looks good. I like that. Okay. So we'll put that there. We'll put these away. Get this on my tweezer. And I'm just going to put a little dollop of glue in there. going to stick my bead in. And then again I'm going to fluff that. And then as one final touch, excuse my reach, I've got my gold stickles here. And I'm just going to touch the edges with the gold stickles like on these. You can see the gold stickles peeking. And I don't do every single edge. I just kind of touch it randomly so that it's not necessarily a circle around your flower. It's just a highlight on some of your petals. And I'm just going to kind of rub it. I'm not drawing a line with it. As you can see, I'm just kind of rubbing it on. And again, just randomly. It doesn't need to be a line all the way around because then it just, it won't look, it'll look like a line of stickles all the way around. And you guys, I'm coming up on 500 subscribers already. Can you believe that? 
when I started this, when I got 100 subscribers, I thought I was in heaven. <laughs> now I'm already coming up on 500, so I have to decide what I'm going to do for that 500th subscriber. Or for if I'm going to do a, a drawing or a giveaway or what I'm going to do. And I would just keep doing that until I got all the way around the bottom layer as well. I'll give you a look at, at it so far for sake of time here. So there you go. That is how I do my coffee filter flowers. I'll get you another look at these that are completely finished. That's how I make them. Super, super simple. Now you guys know how easy they really are. And then once this stickle dries on the one that I just made, I will scrunch it up and shape it a little more. And once I've got it where I want it to be, and I told you this about my fabric flowers, I will take my liquid starch and I will saturate this fairly well. And then I will just set it aside to air dry. And at that point, it's important to let it air dry for a couple of reasons. One, you've got stickles on there, which is basically a polymer glue and if you heat set it and you get that stickles too hot it will bubble and leave funny white marks on your flowers the other reason is your hot glue will come apart if it gets too warm so once I spray it with my fabric starch I just set them aside let them dry on their own and that makes them really gives them that really really firm stiff quality so that they don't smash down so that's it, guys.